Okay, welcome back. Uh, we left it with Naltrexone. This is an informational channel. You should run everything by a qualified healthcare professional before you do anything or talk about anything. To other folks, like for example on Facebook, I can't believe some of the advice on Facebook. Be careful. Uh, Dr. Google, yeah, be careful. Uh, you know, it's the most important thing you have. It's the ability to separate something that just doesn't sound right. There's a little voice on your shoulder, right? And it just doesn't sound right. Find out for real. And, uh, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Today, we're going to talk just a little bit about rule four, know thy meds. And we were talking about invisible pain and the pain of fibromyalgia. And I'm going to lump in other disease states, Alzheimer's, Gillian Barre. Um, we're going to throw in some of this myofascial pain, uh, headache management. We're just going to throw in a few that um, are often treated uh, conventionally with reluctance. And that would be with either opioids or analgesics of another variety. Opioids are fine. I'm a believer in opioids, but they have to be used appropriately and you have to have a lot of training with opioids. Just to write a prescription is ill-advised. A healthcare provider should know what the risk reward benefit is, particularly in your favor. It's always got to be in your favor. And what is resistant to opioids? Well, that invisible pain awfully is. It's oftentimes the um, tough pains like neuropathic pains, central pain from the central nervous system, and of course fibromyalgia, inside out as opposed to outside in. It drives us to rule four, know thy meds. And I'm going to take you down one of the categories called opioids, but I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent toward opioid antagonists. There's really I'll say three types of opioid understandings that we should probably have here. Um, agonist or pure opioid type drugs. Uh, take drug, drug work. Take more, drug work, drug work, drug work. Then you start getting side effects and it just keeps going. Okay, that would be the morphines, the oxycodones, the hydrocodones, pure what we call mu opioid agonist. Mu is the receptor where opioids work for later discussion. Let's not go down that, that rat hole right now. Opioid agonist antagonist, both work with and work against the opioid. Buprenorphine, that would be, I guess, the classic. There's others, but buprenorphine is so well known as a uh, recovery drug in the uh, medication assisted treatment of opioid addiction or dependency. Not every person that takes opioids is an addict. Please don't mix that up. And then there's this side and that's opioid antagonist, completely against opioids. That would be naloxone or Narcan reverses opioid and another one called naltrexone. Naltrexone binds tightly to the mu opioid receptor and blocks opioids. Bink! Buprenorphine is pretty tight too, but less so. And we give it to folks that we want to really block opioids. And you can take it in oral or IM form, intramuscular, and the oral form is about 50 milligrams usually, and the IM form is the same. And for a period of time, it can really work. The intramuscular can work quite a while. There's a formulation that can last up to a month, and it's really a good drug. Say you have an adolescent and you're worried, who wouldn't, a mother, a father, family members, whomever it might be, they're just 
somewhat impulsive, compulsive, and they have temptation. But if you have something on board that can block an opioid and they, sh they, they show out at a party, uh, it's still blocking the opioid. In this day, you can't be too safe. That's a good drug. But naltrexone can also be taken daily uh, and it can block the opioid as well and it can do it really well so you don't want to take that drug under any circumstances and you're absolutely sure that the opioids are out of your system period period end of story if you have a drug like now uh, trexone given with methadone and methadone's long long half-life particularly if you take other medicines that make it longer <laughs> such as ranitidine simple drugs you get over the counter you could give that drug now trex on and throw somebody a withdrawal why am i going back and forth on this stuff because that invisible pain or some other of these types of pain that we're going to be talking about but we're going to be keeping coming back there's something about keeping coming back as we walk forward we always got to be looking in the rearview mirror well what did i just learn how can i apply it Naltrexone in very low doses seems to decrease the irritability in those glial cells, those little tiny things in the nervous system that may have something to do with neuroinflammation. Go back an episode. So, uh, something to think about. Low dose naltrexone has shown uh, in my practice and others that it helps quite a few disease states or pain states that are very resistant. Interstitial cystitis, fibromyalgia, fills a lot of buckets there. Uh, I can go on, I mean, neuropathies, um, inside out problems as opposed to outside in. So we're gonna keep going down the road of rule four to get to rule five. From a compassionate standpoint, I want to get rid of everybody's pain, but from a realistic standpoint, I want to improve your function, quality of life, and just take it to a better place. So.